One of my favorite Arch-based distributions is Endeavor OS. Now, I'd probably be using Endeavor on my main system if it weren't for the fact that I like Arco so much, but I did actually use Endeavor on my laptop for two or three months, and I really enjoyed it. In a recent release, they actually came out with two new window managers for us to try out, so today we're going to be taking a look at the BSPWM version of Endeavor OS. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now we're going to be installing this in a virtual box, virtual machine. So let's go ahead and start this up. So this will log us into a live environment that's running XFCE. In order to install BSPWM, we actually have to hit this here. Now, why they have these two separated out, I'm not sure. Maybe because they're being maintained by separate people. I'm not exactly sure. So Because it's kind of like Manjaro does, where Manjaro has the three official versions. And then they have several community spins. This is kind of the same. So we're just going to select BSPWM here. Now we'll us up into the Calamari's installer. We'll select American English. That's the proper time zone. That's the proper keyboard. And we'll go ahead and hit erase disk. We don't need a swap. Now this will probably be using uh, ext4, I would guess. So we got basically all the base developer stuff here that you'll need. This includes the video codecs and video drivers and xorg and all that kind of stuff and then bspwm and then you could add printing support or the accessibility tools and stuff but we don't need any of that stuff right now let's just go ahead and hit next we'll type in our name here and oops we put a, i think that's fine and we'll just type in bspwm i guess vert and then a very long password. And then we'll hit next. And then install. And install now. Now this shouldn't take too very long. But I do know that it sometimes gets hung up around the 8% mark. As it says here. That even if you don't see any progress. You should just go ahead and be patient. It even says be patient a couple times. So we're just going to be, be patient. And I'll cut the video here and come back. A few moments later. Okay. That was the longest Linux install I've had in almost two years. Uh, that was almost 15 to 20 minutes. It was closer to 20 minutes worth of install right there and they weren't an entertaining 20 minutes if you know what i mean and like normally you can see the progress bar go you know like one percent at a time even if it's slow this one gets stuck at eight percent then i get stuck at 41 percent. and there's a good reason why they've put those slides in there it says be patient because if they hadn't said that i would have stopped it thinking that it was you know not working <laughs> so uh that is weird that it's just a little weird because this is not an <laughs> Endeavor OS isn't like some special sauce or whatever that's you know installing Gentoo and compiling everything from scratch. It's just installing Arch. <laughs> I almost could have installed Arch in that time. In fact, I have installed Arch in that time. Now, granted, it was with a script, but you know it was very quick, and this was not quick. So there's something weird with that. Anyways, we're installed. We're going to go ahead and uh, close this here, and I'm going to shut down. I don't know why the screen is flashing. It has something to do with not being in full screen, maybe? Yeah, okay. So we're just going to power this down. That way I can remove the, the installation media from VirtualBox if I have to. And I have to. And we'll start back up again. Here we go. So this is light DM, it looks like. Which is not surprising. That seems to be the one that most distributions are settling on these days. I know Arco has transitioned to SDDM because of a driver issue with light DM. Let's go ahead and sign in here. Let's see what we got. So this is BSPWM as themed by the Endeavor OS team or the community, I suppose. Uh, we got Polybar up here, welcome app. Um, 
and dunce notifications from my system, of course. So let's go ahead and take a look at this welcome map. So we got update mirrors, update system, which we'll go ahead and do. We shouldn't have anything here because it should have been an internet install. Yep, good. Okay, good. Uh, we got package cleanup and configuration. This is something you can schedule to clean up your packages, your your uh, Pac-Man cache, and probably I don't know if this would work on your like a AUR helper cache, but maybe it would. Uh, you, so you can schedule that if you want to, um, which apparently I want to. Why not? So this is going to be comparing uh, the packages that were installed so we're using Mel. Uh, let's see here, change display manager. So this will allow you to go to uh, something different. So we just change that to SDDM. We can do that. Why not? That's cool. Uh, change display resolution. Reboot is required to ch for the changes to take effect. Okay, I knew that. And change the default wallpaper. Choose one of the Endeavor OS wallpapers. I wonder why wall Papers is on here now three times. Oh, so you can download more. Might as well, why not? Uh, sure. I wonder how you move. I thought in BSPWM you moved the win floating windows around using the super key or the alt key. I mean, it's usually one or the other, right? But that doesn't work. Okay. Um, well, we're going to close that. All right, so that's the welcome app. It also has some links to the wikis and your documentation stuff and some tips and stuff for using the AUR and hardware and Bluetooth and such, and then some more apps that you might want to install. So we're going to just go ahead and hit, don't show me this anymore. Okay, I remember. All right, so this is BSPWM, so we should be able to hit super enter for a, ter for a terminal. Let's see, I'm... Betting. This is Termite. So let's see if NeoFetch is installed, which it is. So, yep, this is Termite. So we're running Endeavor OS Linux and we have a kernel of 5.11.15. So that's like bleeding edge, which you'd expect because this is an Arch Linux distro. Uh, 787 packages at install. We're using Bash 5.1.4. And this is, like I said, BSPWM using the Arc Dark and Arc XD themes. And we got source code pro as the font in this terminal. And like I said, this is termite, which is a fantastic choice. I love myself some termite. So let's see. So super Q, does that quit? It does. Okay. So we should have the standard layout here for BSPW, which we do. It's nothing special there. We have gaps installed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the BSPWM RC file. So let's see. That should be located in dot config bspwm and then yep we have uh so we'll vim into bspwm rc and vim is not installed by default interesting so sudo pacman oops dash s vim what is it with distributions lately and not installing vim out of the box i th i mean i understand Vi is probably always there, right? And I bet you Nano's there. It is. So they install Nano, and then and Vi comes, you know, obviously pre-installed because it's Linux, but not Vim. And it's an interesting thing that is just I've noticed. It's not in Ubuntu. It's not in uh, now at Endeavor OS. I'm pretty sure it's not in one of the other ones that I've just recently tried. Didn't have Vim either. Well, it was Pop OS. That's just an interesting choice. I just thought that Vim was much more popular than that. But anyways, it doesn't matter. It's now installed, so we'll just Vim into BSPWMRC. So we're starting SXHKD from the right at the beginning. We've given ourselves some workspaces here, even though they don't have those labels when you go up here. Interestingly, that that's those are going to be defined by polybar, not here. So I guess that's just the way BSPWM does it. We got gaps here and the ratio for the windows. So you notice when the when you spawn a new window, this window over here is just a little bit bigger than this window here. Uh, borderless monocle, that's where, for when you make things full screen, I believe. And these are some rules for s different applications, mostly to allow them to be floating or whatnot. 
and then we'll scroll down a little bit. We got some border stuff here, some more auto start functions here for different scripts and nitrogen and PyCom here and the network manager applet and then a cursor prompt. And that's literally the whole of the BSPWMRC file, which is very minimal. It's very nice. I prefer minimal configuration files. So there's just not a lot here. Now, our key bindings are going to be in SXHKD and then we'll vim into SXHKDRC. So we got super enter for turn, super D starts Rofi. So this is what Rofi looks like out of the box. That's pretty neat. I'm not sure that that color really goes with the rest of the thing they got going on here because it's a different color blue than everything else unless my eyes are deceiving me it's more this is more of a nord color but you know whatever that's something you can change very easily it might just be my eyes because i've never you know my eyes are kind of blind uh super control d gives us show open window so super control d that's the like the um that just shows you the open windows okay um and then ssh sessions which is also rofi Power menu super shift E is also Rofi. Okay, and then make SXHKD reload as configuration files, which is super escape, which is pretty much default for us as SXHKD. Uh, close and kill is super shift Q. Super alt Q or an R will restart the window manager. Super Y will start the. We'll do the. Send the newest marked node to the newest preselected node. So this is where BSPWM completely always loses me. I don't understand the whole preselection stuff that it does. Like, supposedly if we... I, I don't even know what that does. I have no clue. I just have not used BSPWM enough to understand what it does. So that's a, a me problem. And it's a deficiency that one of these days I'll actually go through and fix and actually learn what BSPS, BSPWM actually does, but uh, that day is not today. So this will change the window state, super T. Uh, this is some complicated stuff here because you don't see this very often in SXHKD, even though it's completely possible to do. So yeah, changing the focus and that's it. That's the entire SXHKD file. There's nothing here really to open up a ton of applications outside of the Rofi stuff. So after you get done with Rofi, you don't have any key bindings for any application. So that's just something you'd have to go through and you know add in afterwards if you're going to use this. I would just use my own SXHKD file. But the two configuration files I've looked at are both very, very minimal. And that's really cool because... You don't want a lot of cruft, especially if you've used BSPWM before or used a window manager before, because chances are you have your own things that you, you're going to want to put in there, and you don't want to have to go through and spend a whole bunch of time pulling things out and having to uncomment things or remove a whole bunch of comments and stuff. It's one of the few complaints I have about Arco Linux is that their configuration files for every window manager of theirs I've tried all have just a ton, a ton of comments in them and stuff. And while that's great for new users, for people who have, you know, are just installing it because they want to, you know, use their stuff and know what they're doing, it can be kind of annoying. Uh, but that's mostly just me being a whiny bitch. Uh, so, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the application. So let's close this, and we'll do super D. And I can't make this any. Actually, I wonder if I could. So let's uh, open that back up and go and zoom in. So we'll just uh, cd into dot config. SX. We're just going to do this live right on camera. And we'll vim, to SX, vim into SXHKDRC. And we'll see if um, we can easily change the font size. And we can. We'll make this 16. That way you can actually see it. And then Super Escape sh should reload the SXHKDRC file. And then we can do Super D. Yes, that's bigger. Cool. Alright, so... Just a brief run through of what that long installation actually went through and installed. So, so far at the top here, we have the about XFCE stuff. So this is going to be using like a little bit of an XFCE backend. So you can probably, this probably has like the XFCE hardware manager and stuff like that. Bulk rename, which is, which comes with Thunar. 
Uh, celluloid for multimedia. I love that this has like a description of what the stuff is. Competence here. I'm assuming is Pycom also here? Because yes, Pycom is also here. That's the second distribution in a row that had both Pycom and Compton installed. That's just really weird for me because Compton is depreciated as far as I'm aware. So we got the configure EOS update notifier. Customizable customize look and feel. This is gonna be the XFCE. Like no, this is this is LX appearance. Okay. So in terms of themes, you don't get a ton of themes here, you just get arc. That's it. What about icons? Same thing with icons. You don't get a lot. There's arc, XP, and paper. That's it. Okay. So if you want extra themes, you're going to have to install them yourselves. That's, I mean, that's probably a good thing. So we have uh, Firefox as our web browser. HTOP is installed by default. Icon browser, light DM reader settings. So that's to change the light DM theme. Meld MPV for videos. Nitrogen for wallpapers. Uh, Pulse Audio is here. QT Reflector Simple is going to be for changing the mirrors for uh, Arch Linux, the Arch Linux mirrors. Removable drives and media. Software token. Uh, Termite is here. Thunar is your fi file manager. And uh, UX Term is here. And X Term is here. And Vim is, is something I installed. So that is it in terms of software that's installed out of the box. Now, that just leaves me scratching my head because I'm not sure why the install took so long then. They didn't install anything, so what was it downloading there in the background? It doesn't make any sense, so that's very curious to me. So this is a very, very minimal install of basically Arch Linux. I mean, obviously, if you run NeoFetch here... You're not going to get like an Arch Linux logo, but you're using basically Arch Linux because that's not anything that they've installed on top of this other than BSPWM and its dependencies and then themed it. That's literally all they've seemed to have done. If you're in, you're looking for an Arch based distro, this would be a good option. I'm not convinced that it's the best one out there. I I'm having some. I'm having some issues with that install. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm having a feeling that it's a little bit buggy. And that's not really how... Because I don't remember that happening when I installed it on my laptop. It was much quicker. And I, and I don't even really care about the time. I mean, the, the time is odd. More, it's the way it does things, how it gets hung up on certain percentages and just doesn't look like it's doing anything. That's very weird. Especially when they've gone to the trouble of actually opening up a terminal in the background to show you like the progress of what the, it's doing and to show you what's doing in the background. And to have that just kind of back there hanging as well, it's very weird because it's supposed to be doing something. It's supposed to be showing us what it's doing, and yet it doesn't. It's very, very weird. But in terms of, I mean, I'm, I'm going to switch back to this for a minute. In terms of design, this is very pretty. So, you know, we've got the... 10 workspaces up there at the top. It does have an like a, a keyboard shortcut cheat sheet thing, which you'd have to zoom in on. So it, it shows you a few of the things. I bet you this probably gets it via a grep in your... It probably either greps out your SXHKDRC file or even... It might just cat it out even. I don't know. Um, but it's very simple. And if you need to get to that, you probably can assign that to its own key binding if you wanted to. There's so few cube bindings, you probably don't even really need it. So that's 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 really cool. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the thing that that Awesome does. Only you know it's not quite as well put together. Um, there is a power management button up here as well. But like I said, the design of this is very well done. Uh, it's very pretty, and I really expected it to be because the XFCE version of Endeavor OS is also very pretty. So I'm wondering if the install problems that I was having have to do with this being a community edition. Maybe it's because it's not officially like part of the family or whatever that the reason why it was hanging up. I'd have to go through and install the XFCE version again to see if that thing has the same problems. Uh, I mean, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, I mean, as long as you have 20, 25 minutes in, to to burn, it's not like it's not like you can, you know, the end of the world because it seems working just fine. So that is a first look at Endeavor OS. I think I still prefer Argo to it just a little bit because it gives you more options at install.
it also has a lot bigger selection of window managers and stuff, but as a successor to Antigos, which when Antigos was alive, it was my favorite Arch-based distro. It was just always the one that I installed because it was just really, really good. And it seemed like the community was, you know, also very good. And that's one thing that Endeavor kind of has inherited because the Endeavor community is also just fantastic. So if you need help or if you're having some problems or whatever, definitely Endeavor is one of the friendliest communities, at least on the Arch-based side. You know what I mean? So make sure you give it a check out and leave your comments below if you do, if you, if you have checked out one of the Endeavor OS spins, let me know how you felt about it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cash. You can follow us on Facebook at the Linux Cash. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Levels 2, 3, 4, and 5 get access to our videos a little bit early, so make sure you check that out if that's something you're interested in. I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.